All right, here we go. Uh, so I have uh, pretty good software in it now. Uh, let me do a reset here. It gives you a splash screen, MSI guy. Enter hertz. So we're displaying hertz, so 10,000 hertz. Um, as you arrow left and right, there's a little uh, signal that gives, tells you which digit you're going to be modifying. So we're going to be uh, modifying the hundreds digit, and then we can uh, we can count up and count down in the in the hundreds digit. And uh, we can come over here even into a, into blank space, and and uh, so now it's one million uh, ten thousand. So there's a button over the bottom that zeroes it. Um, it automatically detects, um, let me arrow away over here. So, uh, so this is a problem, um, and I'll explain it in, in, uh, in detail on paper. Uh, there's a, a rounding error, so instead of incrementing correctly, it's giving me a weird, a weird, uh, numbers out here. And like I said, I'll explain that. What I wanted to show you though, if you go above 30,000, it, it clamped it at 30,000 because that's, uh, 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 30 megahertz is, uh, I'm sorry, not thousand, 30 megahertz is the top end of the DDS. So it, uh, it does that. And then it, it uh, uh, if you try to, let's see, we'll go over here. And if you try to go below zero, it won't let you go below zero. So it clamps it at zero and it clamps it at, at uh, 30 megahertz. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's uh, working really good. Um, definitely like it. And it's outputting data, which is great. Um, so let me explain to you how the software works. I found a, a project online that somebody had done with an Arduino and, and that particular DDS board. And he wrote a little menu system. And I took a look at it, and um, wow, was it way overcomplicated. He way overthought this thing. Um, so let me show you the let me show you my way to do it, which is a super super simple way to do it. And uh, uh, a lot of times, menu systems are, are complicated to write. Um, my basics of the of the software is that it's always polling. It's always going around and around and around to see if you've pressed any switches. And then if you press a switch, it acts on it, right? And then runs a sub sum routine or does something, right? So uh, yeah, so let me let me describe to you how I do the uh, digit increment and why it's giving me that error and what I'm going to do to fix it. Okay, so we have uh, eight we have eight digits. My pen's drying out. Uh, so we have eight digits, and uh, we want to have a menu system to change those eight digits. And so we have a uh, uh, a right key and a left key. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pointer. So my pointer is called digit. Digit. There we go. Digit. And digit's going to be equal to where you are in this uh, in this. So this is going to be the zero digit. Zero, one, two, three, and this one's going to be the seven digit, okay? And so digit's going to go between zero and seven. And as you hit the uh, right button, you're going to decrement digit, and you hit the left button, you're going to increment digit. So that's all these buttons have to do is increment or decrement digit, and then clamp it at zero or clamp it at seven, depending on which way you go. Then you know which digit you're in. So let's say you're in the, here's zero, one, let's say you're in the two digit, Okay, two digit means that you want to be in the hundredth column. And so the up arrow and the down arrow just need to uh, add 100 or subtract 100. And that's all they need to do. Okay, well, uh, we can use our digit. We can say, well, that's uh, 10 to the digit. 10 to the digit, okay, so 10 to the digit, so 10 to the zero is one, 10 to the one is 10, you know, 100, 1,000. So all we have to know is digit. We don't even have to remember any numbers down here. We'll just say, okay, up arrow is gonna be uh, add 10 to the digit, and down arrow is gonna be minus 10 to the digit. And so uh, Arduino actually has uh, a 10 power, it has a power function, it has a, uh, 
it has a y to the x, it has a y to the x function. And it's called power. P pow actually. P W P O W Prisoner of War. My uncle was prisoner of war in World War II. His bombardier and B-17 got in a camp for a long time. Anyway. Um so the POW is going to be, uh, I think, a 10 comma digit. You give it the base and you give it the, uh, give it the Y value and give it the X value. So it'll be 10 to, the, 10 to the digit. Unfortunately, this is not good at eight digits of resolution. It works good up to seven digits, but up to eight digits, you start to get it some type of rounding error. Uh, so, uh, so that's what's causing that weird increment decrement at the very, very high when it's uh, 10 to the 7th. 10 to the 7th just is not right <laughs> when you use this function. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a, uh, an array. Okay, so I'm going to call an array. Uh, uh, we'll, call it, uh, we'll call it We'll call it increment. And that array is going to be uh, seven. So its value will be between zero and seven. Okay, so maybe that's eight. I don't remember. Anyway, and we're going to, uh, we're going to say, okay, well, that's going to be uh, uh, 10, 10 million, 1 million, 100,000, 1,000, da 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 da, yeah, 100. 10, 1, and so uh, instead of using the uh, pow function, I'll just use the uh, increment array, and I'll just say, you know, increment 0, increment 1, increment 6, whatever it is, and uh, have that in there, and that should make my thing very, very accurate. I don't need to go in between. This actually will allow you to raise things like to the 6.2 or something, um, but I'm just going to have a single increment, so I can make this array and everything will be just fine. So let's go do that and see if it fixes my machine, and then I can call it a day. All right, firmware is complete. I can now uh, go up here to higher digits and increment, and everything, everything works fine now. I don't get those weird uh, truncation errors or whatever, roll, roll over, I don't know. It's some type of inaccuracy though in the power function, so if you're ever gonna use the power function, be aware of that, it doesn't seem to work well. So uh, I have that uh, array in there now, so uh, it, it puts in hard numbers and it all works good now. So, uh, so this video, I want to I want to test it. We've already seen it on on an oscilloscope. It looks like a sine wave, but I'd like to test it for frequency accuracy, uh, for distortion, uh, since it's a sine wave generator, and I can test distortion in the audio band, um, and I want to check it on a spectrum analyzer, see if it has any harmonics. Okay. So let's see here. What's the first one we should do? Uh, first one we should do is, is uh, frequency. So let's hook up the uh, frequency counter and see what it does. Okay, before I uh, can turn on my frequency counter, I need to turn on my rubidium standard. Uh, so that takes a while to warm up. It is cold in the garage this morning. So we'll let that warm up. And when we, when we get a green light, uh, so the red light flashes, and then uh, when it turns green, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to go use the counter. Okay, that took about four minutes, and uh, we now have a, a rubidium lock, so we can use the uh, counter. Let's go take a look at that. All right, when it comes on, it defaults to 10 kilohertz, and it seems to be jumping. Uh, might be my counter. Let's see here. Let's um, let's uh, turn the filter on. Yeah, there we go. So there's some high frequency noise probably on the signal, and so I put in a filter, 10, 100 kilohertz filter. So uh, it's gating a little too fast. So let's turn that down. 
Well, that's not too bad. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.0001%. I don't know, something. It's low. <laughs> that's pretty good. So that's 10 kilohertz. Let's bump it up. Let's see, this is uh, 110. Uh, yeah, very nice. Looks good. Okay, here's one, oops. Let's see, let's do one. Okay, I've entered one megahertz and it's no longer triggering, so the amplitude must have gone down. There we go. So one, one megahertz looks spot on. Very nice. And we'll do uh, 11 megahertz. Let's see if 11 megahertz, 11 megahertz will work. Let's see, we're no longer triggering. There we go. Where can we trigger? There we go. Oops. Yeah, so the uh, intensity, uh, the amplitude is going way down. I gotta turn my, turn my filter off here. There we go. So, yeah, it seems to be a little noisy up at the high, up at the high end. And, Here's the very high end, 30 megahertz. Well, that looks good. Maybe I just wasn't triggering well on it. So anyway, so 30 megahertz. Uh, yeah, looks very, very good. Let's try something really low. Let's try, uh, let's try 10 hertz. Let's see if it knows how to do 10 hertz here. Uh, uh, turn the filter on, there we go. 9.98 hertz. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, so I like it. It's not perfectly accurate. I've got a nice generator if I needed to have that. But this looks like uh, very, very good for, uh, for what it is. It seems very, very good. In the middle range there, it seems spot on. No, need, no adjustments are needed. So let's go uh, take a look at it on a spectrum analyzer. See if the, uh, well, let's see, we're right next to the, yeah, we're right next to the, uh, the storage meter. So let's do that one next. Okay, uh, this is the Keithley uh, 2015. So we can go to total harmonic distortion and I'll move the cable over. And we'll set it to some value. Uh, let's see. Here's 10 kilohertz. And at 10 kilohertz, the total harmonic distortion is 0.04%. Let's go to A thousand hertz. That well, looks about the same. And let's do. Let's see, we're out of range. Uh, let me do. Let's see, that's a thousand hertz. Six hundred hertz. 300 hertz. Yeah, so it's 0.04% uh, total harmonic distortion. So, yeah, nice sine wave. Let's uh, see if that makes sense uh, looking at it on an oscilloscope. All right, did I see oscilloscope? I'm at spectrum analyzer. Okay, let's hook it up there. Okay, uh, so we have it up to the spectrum analyzer and we see lots of harmonics. Um, but let's see if that's true. Um, let's do a frequency center of 10 kilohertz, which is what it's set to. And we will do a uh, peak search. 
and our amplitude may be, yeah, let's see here, okay. So we do have some harmonics. So reference level. So what I want to do is, uh, let's see, the frequency center, 10 kilohertz, and I'm going to do a peak search, and I'm going to do marker, marker to, oops, marker, uh, let's see, peak search, where is it, I know it's in here, Oh, there we go. I want to do marker two reference level, okay? And so I've set the top of the analyzer now to the carrier. So every other harmonic will be dBc, uh, dB compared to the, uh, to the carrier, okay? So we're gonna do frequency, start frequency at 10 kilohertz. So now we can't hardly see that, but we're gonna do a span, we're gonna do a stop frequency of one megahertz. And so those are all of our um, subharmonics down there. All right. And then we can turn on a display line and I can put a line down here. And so kind of there, my harmonics are like below that. So the um, display line now is at minus 58. Um, so, yeah, it's got harmonics, but they're pretty far down. Looks pretty nice. Let's see, frequency, stop frequency of 100 kilohertz. So this is our 10 kilohertz and that's 100 kilohertz. So yeah, I don't see any other harmonics close by. So that looks good too. So I say it's a, it's a winner. All right, so it's pretty rare that I actually complete a project. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I like to get things like 90% done and then stop. Uh, but this one's all complete now, which is great. And this is actually a project that I had in mind when I built this front panel. Um, so this is one of the instruments I thought I would do. Um, so now I have a, a generator. Uh, this generator is good up to 30 megahertz. It's great for audio use and uh, uh, kind of HF use, things like that. So it's great for that. It'd be cool to have a uh, maybe a counter to go with it. So a frequency counter in the same form factor. That might be cool. Um, might be cool to have higher frequencies. Um, like the 4.4 uh, gigahertz one I've shown, but maybe in this form factor, that might be cool. Uh, if you have any other ideas for, for projects in this particular form factor, um, I've always thought about having a whole series of things, maybe a power meter, um, that might be good. An RF power meter, uh, that'd be a good, that would be a good project for this. Um, yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. I have the, uh, uh, I have the, uh, uh, turn on, my lab bench power supply built in. So I've got two instruments now in this form factor.